Good morning, everyone. Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. Again, Dr. Randall Gates, board certified chiropractic neurologist and chiropractic physician at Gates Brain Health. Today, we're talking about depression and Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Uh, I've talked about this subject through the years. <clears throat> Haven't talked about Hashimoto's as much as of late, but talking about it now. The reality is there's just an inundation of information about Hashimoto's out there. It seems like everybody and their grandma is talking about Hashimoto's. So I tried to talk about it relative to specific subjects. And here it's very much applied to depression. Uh, I'm not diminishing it by saying that. I'm just saying that everybody now has a Hashimoto's treatment. Um, I can share my experience. My experience is that with Hashimoto's, there are are about five core principles that you really want to pay attention to. What is Hashimoto's? Hashimoto's is where the immune system attacks the thyroid. The element of Hashimoto's can be independent of hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism is where your thyroid is not producing enough thyroid hormone. And most typically it's because the immune system is attacking the thyroid gland itself. That's referred to as Hashimoto's, referred to or named after Dr. Hashimoto Hakuru uh, in 1904. Now, something that a lot of patients also find confusing is that they say, well, my thyroid has been checked. My doctor has checked my thyroid and he tells me or she tells me it's normal. <clears throat> well, most commonly doctors are checking thyroid hormones. And in this broadcast, I'm going to talk about how independent of thyroid hormones, this immune response to the thyroid, referred to as Hashimoto's thyroiditis, not necessarily hypothyroidism, but Hashimoto's thyroiditis can lead to symptoms like depression and anxiety. And we're going to talk about that. And just going a little more into the nuances. So someone can technically have hypothyroidism without Hashimoto's. Now I said 95% of people with Hashimoto's, or excuse me, with hypothyroidism have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. But some statistics say 70%. So there is a gray range, so to speak, where some people may have hypothyroidism without Hashimoto's. But the vast majority of people with hypothyroidism have Hashimoto's. There are also people without hypothyroidism who have Hashimoto's. That's referred to as euthyroid, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So that's what we have going on. Let me go back up and let me just escape here. Let me make sure that on the live I'm catching all of you, and good morning to everybody who's joining. I want to say hi. Okay, I'm going to flip back over to the screen. Present. Okay. So going through it. Um, this is an article where they were looking at quality of life uh, in Hashimoto's patients. And these were Hashimoto's thyroiditis patients on thyroid medication compared to individuals who didn't have Hashimoto's not on thyroid medication, if I remember correctly. And what they found is the conclusion, basically, you can see down here. Oh, goodness, I hate it when that happens on these slides. But the conclusion was that those on levothyroxine replacement, that's what it says through here, show persistent impairments in both cognitive functioning and general well-being. And this is really, really, really important because I can't hammer this point home enough. That if you know someone with depression, who has a thyroid condition, you want to start talking to them about their thyroid antibody levels. So the immune response to the thyroid seems to be one of the main predictors of individuals having poor quality of life and having poor general well-being. And I'll talk about in other articles, other symptoms of depression and anxiety. So this is a great one. The prevalence of depression and anxiety disorders in patients with euthyroid Hashimoto's thyroiditis, a comparative study. And this, I think, was done in 2013, published around 2014. And uh, let me see here. Yeah, so basically they took 51 patients and 45 patients. I think it was the 51 patients who had Hashimoto's, 45 patients, I believe, had goiter. Yeah, exactly. So here you see euthyroid Hashimoto's thyroiditis, that's euthyroid HT, and euthyroid goiter increase the predisposition to major depression and anxiety disorders. 
and thyroid autoimmunity and other pathologies should be investigated in youth thyroid patients with chronic and treatment resistant complaints. And that's a big thing that we're talking about here with this whole depression series that I'm doing. A lot of it applies to treatment resistant depression or just to bring light to treatment resistant depression. And if you have depression, you don't want to go down a medication path, so to speak. These are the other factors that are really being discussed in the scientific literature, in the psychiatric literature, regarding why people are not getting better. So what is major depression? Major depression is when somebody is not just sad for a few days, they have this overwhelming feeling of sadness for at least more than two weeks. Oftentimes it's months on end. They oftentimes don't enjoy hobbies and activities they can't find pleasure in things they're tired they don't sleep well they tend to gain weight they tend to lose weight one or the other typically they maybe just be glued to the couch they may have thoughts you know that are um well we won't go into the thoughts but you know what i mean they may have those thoughts too so it's a really significant painful condition and some estimates say it's upwards around 16 percent of our population has depression and half of them may not respond to medications in the long run. So that's why I'm talking about the microbiome, talking about obesity here, talking about Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So this is a really, this is a seminal study. This was not the first one, but one of the major studies that came out finding that Hashimoto's patients do have depression at a higher rate, as well as anxiety disorders. And here you can see just some of the statistics and you can pause this. On the replay but in essence when you look at like major depression and the goiter group 45 or excuse me the Hashimoto's group 15 had um, major depression 10 in the goiter group the control group three so and then you can go down the list some are more pronounced than others but here you can say any depressive disorder any depressive disorder 17 in the Hashimoto's group 11 in the goiter group what's a goiter that's where your thyroid enlarges oftentimes associated with Hashimoto's, and then four in the control group. So, now I love this article. I came across this article this morning, and pretty interesting. Now, I don't commonly cite studies from mice. Mice studies are kind of where research begins, because it gives researchers a good chance to explore hypotheses that then they can see, do they translate to humans? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But this is an interesting study regarding Hashimoto's thyroiditis inducing neuroinflammation and emotional alterations in euthyroid mice. So these are mice that have normal thyroid hormones, but they have the immune response to their thyroid. So Hashimoto's thyroiditis induces neuroinflammation and emotional alterations in euthyroid mice. And in the conclusions you can see, I put these articles up because then any of you that want to go into PubMed and access them, you can. And I need to remember to stop moving my mouse because that leads this toolbar at the bottom. But our results are the first to suggest that Hashimoto's thyroiditis induces neuroinflammation, alters serotonin signaling and the euthyroid state, which may underlie the deleterious effects, deleterious is negative, negative effects of Hashimoto's thyroiditis itself on emotional function. So again, normal thyroid hormones. Everybody says, well, my doctor checked my thyroid. They checked your thyroid hormones most of the time. You have to have your thyroid antibodies checked if you're concerned about this issue relative to depression. And then here's another one from the Endocrine Journal 2017. Is thyroid autoimmunity itself associated with psychological well-being and euthyroid Hashimoto's thyroiditis? Oh, and the answer is yes. Um, I, I didn't format the slide correctly, but the answer was yes. Now this is one of the interesting, the uh, probably the second most interesting article that I came across today, and that here in 2019, Journal Molecular Biochemistry, Stress Management in Women with Hashimoto's Thyroiditis, a randomized controlled trial. So they took a group of Hashimoto's patients and they, a number of them dropped out. I think it was around 30 patients ended up being in the control group and 30 patients ended up being in the treatment group. And in essence, 
the hypothesis of this research article is that a lot of people have talked about stress being a, an antecedent or like a prodromal factor before somebody develops Hashimoto's. Um, but there hasn't been a lot of research to solidify that. So these researchers said, okay, well, let's go at it the other direction. Let's take a group of Hashimoto's patients and then let's put them into a stress management program. And they did this comparing them to controls and the results of total 16 women with Hashimoto's, uh, wide age range, 25 to 76. Um, after eight weeks, the patients in the intervention group, that was about 30 people, demonstrated statistically significant beneficial decrements in the rate change of antithyroglobulin titers and the levels of stress. Depression and anxiety as well as better, wait, depression and anxiety as well as better lifestyle scores compared to the control group. So in essence, what they saw, which is huge, is that their thyroid antibodies actually went down. Now, a lot of functional medicine practitioners, I'm a functional I, I work in functional neurology is what you want to say. Um, I have a lot of familiarity with the functional medicine world, but I'll say a lot of functional medicine practitioners won't test thyroid antibodies because they will say, you know, oftentimes they don't change. And the reality is I think they, they worry that if the antibodies don't change, then patients are going to give up on their treatment. Um, I've been rechecking thyroid antibodies, and it's pretty interesting. You can see them go down. Uh, and here they saw the immune response to the thyroid reduced by itself with stress reduction. So they didn't change diet. They weren't on supplements per se. They were reducing stress. And by reducing stress, their Hashimoto's response went down and their depression and anxiety responses improved. This is huge. This is like, you know, yell this from the mountaintops. This is big, big, big information. So anybody you know who has... Hashimoto's, anybody you know who has Hashimoto's and depression, really should pay attention to stress management. And basically, this is what they did. The first week, lifestyle and routine changes to healthier direction. The second week, they did diaph diaphragmatic breathing. I did a talk for uh, an addiction lecture where I talked a lot about breathing. Third week, they did progressive relaxation technique. Fourth week, cognitive reconstruction. Fifth week, diet adjustments. Okay, so they did do some dietary changes, but you can see that didn't happen until the fifth week. I will say in my experience, lots of times for the dietary effects to take hold, I mean, we're talking six to eight weeks to see changes in thyroid antibodies, maybe four weeks. So they did diet adjustments in the fifth week. I stand corrected. Sixth week, they did guided imagery. Seventh and eighth week conversation, encouraging the adoption of the techniques. Pretty simple and a huge change. So I appreciate everybody watching. There's our contact info. Um, so let me go back to the live and see what I can see. Um, so anyways, good morning to everybody who has joined. I hope this was helpful. And, uh, and yeah, I think this is pretty cool information that everybody should know about. Anybody who has depression is not approving, who may have Hashimoto's, keep in mind that some estimates say upwards of one out of three females in certain demographics have Hashimoto's. So share this um, information if you want. And thank you all for joining. Have a happy Saturday. And I'll be back on Wednesday with another broadcast.